Hi, my name is Random Tuesday, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made the Nemesis Sword from the game Hades. For my build, I used EVA foam and warbler. So even though I'm going to talk about the specifics of how I made this particular weapon, you'll find the information can be applicable to lots of different EVA foam or warbler sword builds. And if you're looking for more specific information, resources, tutorials, including a pattern for this sword, a pattern for the Zagreus cosplay, information on my Meg cosplay, or a whole bunch of other stuff, you can head over to my website, randomtuesday.com. So with that, let's get started. I started by making a digital outline version of the Nemesis sword by tracing over the design in Adobe Illustrator. After I printed out the pattern and taped the various pieces together before cutting it out. This allows me to use a full size template as I am scaling each of my pieces to kind of make sure I'm keeping everything the same sort of size and scale. The sword is made of a base structure of EVA foam. For the blade, I used 10 millimeter EVA foam, tracing around the template that I had previously created and taped together, and then cutting it out of the foam. Next, I beveled the edge of the blade using my Dremel tool and sanding drum in order to match the design of the blade and create that beautiful slicing edge. For the handle, I'm using a one inch diameter piece of PVC pipe. To attach the blade to the handle, I cut a notch out of the base of the blade that was large enough to fit the handle into it and was going to be short enough to be hidden inside the skull. I then glued the handle to the blade using contact cement and added a few additional pieces of two millimeter EVA foam in order to ensure a snug and secure fit between the blade and the handle. Additional reinforcement would then later be added with Warbla. Once the handle was securely attached to the blade, the next step was to cover the entire thing in Warbla to add the strength and structure and make it significantly more sword-like. I started by sandwiching the blade in between two pieces of Warbla's black art and proceeded to pinch the edges, essentially making like little ravioli of EVA foam and Warbla. I then trimmed off the excess warbla around the edge of the blade and used a few different sculpting tools that I had to really smooth out those edges and make them as crisp as I could possibly get them. Lastly, I added some additional sections of warbla, just leftover strips, a lot of the pieces from around the edge at that join between the handle and the blade. For the skull, I used Kamui Cosplay's Skelly Small Skull printed out at full size. The link to that is down in the description below. I made the skull out of two millimeter EVA foam as I really only needed a base structure and I didn't need the foam structure itself to have all of the stability. I then covered this in Warbla's black art, uh, pinching together and seaming it together as I needed to, to get it into that fully three-dimensional shape. The jaw for the skull was made out of a modified version of Kamui's cosplay simple jack skull pattern, and I used at about 75% size and then made a bunch of modifications of it to kind of make it look right. Once I had the fully assembled skull, it was time to proceed with the wrangling finagling process of getting the skull and the blade handle to be connected to each other. I started by cutting a hole in the top of the skull that was roughly the size of the blade and another hole in the bottom of the skull that was roughly the size of the handle. Because the skull still has some flex even when covered in warbla, I was kind of using the natural properties of that to pull it apart and, and shove the blade handle uh, through the top hole and into the bottom hole. I ended up having to cut more into the skull than I had initially planned. This process involved a lot of improvising and guesswork. The whole thing ended up being a little bit messy, but it was attached. And I just used additional pieces of warbler to clean up that seam between the skull and the blade as best I could and smooth everything out and just kind of hide all the errors as well as I possibly could. The base structure of the pommel was made out of four layers of 10 millimeter EVA foam glued together using contact cement with a hole cut out of the center in order to fit the PVC pipe in. I smoothed out the shape using my Dremel and sanding tool and then blended the shape of the pommel into the rest of the handle using foam clay, which I then sanded down into the exact shape after it dries. Right underneath the base of the skull, I added a couple of rings of EVA foam wrapped in warbla and then I covered the rest of the handle between the pommel and the rings in a piece of two millimeter EVA foam to add just a little bit of extra bulk and make it easier to grip. 
Finally, like the rest of the sword, I covered it in Warbless Black Art, trimming off the excess and smoothing those seams to a seamless finish. The finishing touch of the pommel was adding another strip of 2mm EVA foam covered in Warbla, mimicking the strip of bronze in the design. Each of the cinnamon buns on the skull, for want of a better descriptor, was made out of two layers of 10 millimeter EVA foam glued together using contact cement. The swirly design was carved into them using my Dremel and a very small sanding tool and very careful sanding. And then I sandwiched each of them in Warbla's black art and used the adhesiveness of the Warbla to stick them directly onto the skull. The spikes were made using various scraps of Warbla that I had on hand. I just heated them up, molded them, and shaped them into the right size spike, and then adhered them directly onto each of those beautiful little cinnamon buns. The leaf shapes on the flat edge of the blade were made similar to the rest out of a layer of 2mm EVA foam that I then covered in Warbla, wrapping it around the edges. I made each leaf as an individual piece to really emphasize the gaps in between the leaves and help with the painting and the shading. The leaves were adhered directly to the blade, wrapping around that flat edge using the beautiful adhesion of Warbla. I primed the whole sort with three layers, give or take, of flex bond. This helps fill in some of the gaps and smooth out the surface. Then I went over the whole sort with a piece of fine grit wet sandpaper to get a little bit more smoothing. For the bronze, coppery gold sections of the sword, the skull, and the pommel, I mixed up my own pinkish gold color using a mixture of copper and gold plaid FX paints, and I base coated all of them using a dark brown color. I then added a little bit of extra dimension using the darker copper plaid FX paints in the gaps and creases, and then added a little bit of highlighting using the brighter gold color around the cheekbones to really make them pop. For the blade, I painted the bottom section in a light purple and the top section in a light blue and then airbrushed the light blue to kind of fade it into the purple a little bit more and make a more gradient edge. I also used some airbrushing to add a little bit of dark purple shading around the leaf sections before I then taped off the leaves and painted them in a bright red and airbrushed their edges in a darker red color to really make them stand out. I then painted the beveled edge of the blade in a bright silver to give it that sheen and shiny slicey edge. I added a few finishing touches like painting the eye sockets in the skull and in a deep black and also painting the gem portion on the pommel in a rich royal blue as well as the white handle. I added a little bit of pearlescent paint to it because I thought it looked cool. For the symbols on the edge of the blade, I wanted them to be really clean and crisp and also identical on both sides. So I took the digitized pattern that I'd made previously and then cut them out using my silhouette cutter. For the material that I cut them out of, I took a piece of just plain white printer paper and painted it using the pearlescent plaid FX paint. This added a little bit more depth and dimension to the sheet of paper, but still kept it super thin. I then tacked the symbols down using just a regular glue stick and adhered them permanently to the blade using the Mod Podge Ultra Gloss Sealer, which also happens to act as a glue. I essentially decoupage the symbols to the blade. I then finished the rest of the sword using the same spray on gloss sealer. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments below what other videos, tutorials, or resources you want me to make next. And if you're looking for patterns, tutorials, or other resources, head over to my website, randomtuesday.com or to my Etsy. Both of those links are in the description below where I have a pattern for the sword as well as the Zagreus cosplay and a Meg cosplay that I have made as well. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to all that awesome YouTube -y goodness. And last but certainly not least, thank you to each and every one of my patrons over on Patreon who helped make this video a reality. If you're able to do so, any monthly amount of support on Patreon or even a one-time support over on Ko-fi is truly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.